All right, let's open to page 54, have your homework out, numbers 1 through 10. We began looking at uh, roots yesterday and said that most roots that we will encounter, that we will deal with, don't come out evenly. In fact, if you tried to enter them on the calculator, you'd get a decimal that the calculator eventually, bless you, just runs out of digits. But uh, technically, the number never ends, the decimal never repeats. So most uh, roots that we will encounter, Maddie, are referred to as, because the decimal never ends and never repeats, irrational numbers that are irrational roots. But there are a select few rational roots that I told you to be working on memorizing. Uh, correction for those watching by way of video, um, less than 29, not less than 30. For you guys, it's still Tuesday. I just can't do math. And so uh, for me, I was counting up less than 30 as Tuesday, and I discovered that's less than 29. So uh, less than 29, Gavin and Brecken, is when your quiz is. Fortunately, you still have a few more days because this is less than 27. So then we all have Monday and Tuesday and the weekend. I don't know when you'll have, but we have a weekend, Monday and Tuesday, um, for that quiz. But we'll want to make sure we have those memorized, rational roots ready to go. Now, with a root, we have this uh, little... Um, root symbol, I call it, but it actually has a name, Kendall. Uh, it goes, I shouldn't have, should have missed my chance, but it has a name of whatever you, whoever you are. <laughs> hey, you. A radical sign. <laughs> oh, she has a name, too. The radical sign, right? Just as we call her Kendall, we call this radical sign. And uh, inside the radical sign, I might put a number that I desire to take the root of. And this number inside the radical sign is called the radicand. And then uh, there's a lot of different roots I could take, right? But if I, if I just leave it like this with no number right here, plus I assume we're asking for what kind of root? A square root, a second root, but we say square root. But um, in this case, what if I wanted, for instance, a fifth root? Well, this number right here, class, is called the index. index. The index. And again, if there is no index visible, it's an understood two. two. Um, here with the index, we're looking for the fifth root of 243. Anyone remember what it is? Three. Three. It's one of those memorized roots we should be working on. Sounds like Michael's working on it. That he just put it into his calculator a second ago. But I think he's got it memorized. Oh, he's got his list now. Oh, <laughs> well, you know. All right, just uh, you know, don't want to dash your hopes, but you can't have the list out for the quiz. So uh, anyway, um, so we've got these different parts of our radical expression. We said that with radicals, with roots that are irrational, we may not always be able to take the root, like Michael was able to do just now from his cheat sheet, uh, to get three. Um, it may be something like, oh, heaven forbid, the square root of 243. That's irrational, isn't it? Now, it's bigger than 15, because right, the square root of 225 is 15, right? But it's smaller than 16, because 16 is the square root of 256. Yeah, Michael got his sheet out there. So I know this is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 and a half-ish, right? But we said rather than getting this weird irrational decimal, Instead, what we'll do is we'll simply reduce the radical. We'll make it smaller. And the key to making the radical smaller, or the radicand specifically smaller, um, Abby, is to do what to the radicand? Uh, take out a square of something. Well, to factor it so that one of the two factors is a rational root. Um, anyone see a rational root in 243? Three. Three isn't a rational root. Nine. nine. Nine is a rational root. Let's see if nine's in there. Try dividing it by nine. What do we get? Anybody? Hey, it did work. 27. And so we could take the square root of the nine class to get three times the square root of the 27. But we'd still lose points on the quiz or test if we left an answer like this. Why, Brandon? is stumpified. He thought it was a perfect answer. Uh, Audrey, there's still another rational factor in 27. There's another 9 times 3. We pull out, out of this 9 class, we pull out a, but we already had a 3 out here, so now that's two 3s out there, which gives us 9, not 33, times the square root of this 3 here. A much quicker way, though, would have been if we thought about it. Wait, the fifth root of 243 is 3. That means there are five 3s in here, right? 
What if we took four of them together? That would be 81 times 3. And so 9 times the square root of 3 could have been obtained that way as well. Same answer, right? One's just quicker than the other. It's just whatever your brain sees. If you happen to see the 81, great. If not, you see the 9, great. Go with that. If you're not sure what you see, start plugging and memorize rational roots into the calculator until something divides evenly. And there we go with our reducing. Your homework was 1 through 10, the all. So if you want 1 through 10, the all. All of 1 through 10 on page 54. Have that out, and then we'll go over it together. Obviously, in addition to numbers that had to be factored, we also had some letters that we wanted to address as well. But we said it's actually easier to reduce letters or variables in the radicand because to take the root of a power class, we divide the exponent by the index, which basically means you look at the index, you look at the exponents, you say, how many times is this? Go into that. However many times, that's what comes out. However many left over, that's what you leave over. And we go from there. Let's see how we did. Number one, the square root of 24, Brandon. I've got two in the radicand. So two times the square root of six. All right, so uh, let's rewind here. All right, uh, let's take a look at your homework. Number one, get the square root of 24. And uh, Brandon, what did you get? Two times the square root of six. Excellent. Perfectly read as well. Two times the square root of six. Well done. <laughs> Number two, Abby. Um, four times the square root of three. Four times the square root of three, also perfectly read. Number three, the cube root of 128, Genesis. Two times the cube root of two. What was your rational cube root that you factored it with? You factored the 128 into? 64, and two. 64 times two, perfect. And um, the cube root of the 64 we know is? Cube root of 64. Flip back to your page of memorized roots, which we will have memorized by lesson 29, for those watching on YouTube. Four. So that we should have gotten a four times the cube root of two. So the factoring was perfect. We just took the wrong root out of the 64. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, let's see. Four times the cube root of two there. How about number four, Kendall? Five times the cube root. Si, senorita. Uh, number five. That's my attempt at Spanish. All right, we're done. Number five. I'm not going any further. I'm going to get myself in trouble. Five times the cube root of two is correct. Cinco times the cubo root of dos. All right, number five. Um, Addy. Perfect. On this one here, we have the 32x cubed. Maddie started by saying, well, I recognize that uh, there's a 16 times 2, I assume, right? Took the square root of the 16, you get a 4, and then left the square root of the 2. Take care of numbers first. Do the factoring. Then with the letters, 2 goes into 3 one time with 1 left over, and there's the answer that Maddie gave us. Number 6, we go to uh, Michael. What did you get? I got x times the square root of 14. Close. Uh, so we've got the square root of a 14x to the fourth. And here, the first thing we want to do is split up the 14. So one of the factors is rational, but one doesn't ever help us, right? Four doesn't go in, nine doesn't go in, and 16 is already too big. So you cannot factor the 14. So Michael's absolutely right. We're just stuck leaving the 14. You can't make that radical smaller, or that radicand smaller, rather. But we can say that two, the index, goes into four. Two times. two times with none left over. So I think I heard x times the square root of 14. x squared times the square root of 14. Number seven, Audrey. Two a times the square root of 14. Oh, minus a point. Look at number seven in your book. Not 2a times the square root of 4a. Times the cube root. Just forgot to copy the index over. You factored perfectly 8 and 4 to uh, get the 2 from a cube root of 8 and leaving the cube root of the 4. 3 goes into 4 once with 1 left. Just forgot to bring the index over. And I told you yesterday, it's that little thing that's going to spoil it for us on quizzes and tests and get that so close to perfect. 2a uh, times the cube root of 4a. Uh, number 8, uh, what did you get on this one, Brandon? 2 cubed times the fifth root of 2 cubed squared. Good, because it's a fifth root, we've got to look at our very short list of memorized rational fifth roots. Fifth root of 32 is the one we needed to use here, which of course is 2. 5 goes into 7 once with 2 left. That's how we got 2q times the fifth root of 2q squared. And the number 9, Abby, we got fourth root up here. Uh, 3ay times the fourth root of 3a cubed y is equal. Good. This is a big nasty looking one, uh, but it's a fourth root. And again, there's a rather short list of fourth roots that I told you you need to memorize. 
And uh, so the fourth root she picked was 81. And of course, that factors in 81 and 3. Fourth root of 81 is 3. She left the fourth root of the 3. And again, to take the root of a power class, we divide the exponent by the index. Let's speed it up a little bit to real speed. Okay, to take the root of a power class, divide, divide the, the exponent, exponent by the index. Again, when you're taking the root of a power, Divide the x by the index. And so she said 4 goes into 7 once, 3 left, 4 goes into 5 once, 1 left, 4 goes into 3, none. All 3 left, and there's her answer. Therefore, number 9. How many got that answer on 9? Not that answer on 9. It was big and scary looking, but managed to well. All right, and then number 10, we come to Genesis. Ugh. Sixth roots. Genesis, I didn't give you any memorized sixth roots. We can figure it out, though, right? Like, so what's 1 to the 6th, Genesis? 1. So we know the 6th root of 1 is 1. Um, that's actually no help at all. Uh, let's see, 2 to the 6th. Hmm. Well, what's 2 times 2? Times 2. Times 2. Times 2. Times 2. 64. Okay, so that means the sixth root of 64 is 2. Is there a 64 in 20? No, right? 21. You're not going to be able to simplify the sixth root of the 21 at all. So you're just going to leave the sixth root of the 21. It really comes down to just the letters. How many times does the index go into the exponents? What was your answer there on number 10? Okay, does it, did that help unconfuse you a little? All right, so go ahead and figure your answer. Call it out as you're working it. All right, so we're going to leave the number, 6 through to 21. Now let's come to the letters. What comes out? Uh, D squared. 6 goes into 15 once. Twice. Twice. So we're going to pull out D squared. Because 6 can go into the 15 we had two times, so we pulled 2 out. How many left over, though? Because it is only 12 Ds. There were 15 of them. We took 12 of them to take that sixth root. So how many d's are left over? Okay, we have d to the 15th. We said 6 goes into 15. How many times? Twice. With how many left over? Three left over. So we're going to leave 3 inside. Then we come to the next one, which is the, um, the f to the 32nd. Well, 6 goes into 32. How many times? You could divide it on your calculator if you had to. What? Five. So it goes in five times. You're going to pull out five S. But how many left over? Again, it's the exponent or in exponent divided by index. You said five. How many left over? Two. Two. Right? And even you could do that, I suppose, on your paper. It'd be nice to be able to do it mentally. But if not, again, not the end of the world there. And then uh, <clears throat> six goes into 67. How many times? Well, six goes into six. Once, uh, nothing left, and then six goes into seven. Once with so apparently, how many um, G's am I pulling out? I'm leaving one G, but how many G's am I taking out? Eleven. However many times it goes in, six goes into sixty-seven. Eleven times with one left over. And that's what we should have had for our answer right here. How many have this answer? D squared F to the fifth, G to the eleventh times the sixth root of 21 D cubed F squared G. All right, questions on this. Questions on this. Let me give you several more to work there at your seats and then we will transition into a couple of other reducing topics. We want to work this a little bit more, make sure we're good to go. We should reduce the square root of 392. The fourth root of 48, the sixth root of a to the tenth, b cubed, square root 60, one of fourth s. Working those while I finish writing these.
some of you are discovering why I require you to memorize these. Because without them memorized, you're constantly referring back and forth to a list, and I've got to liberate you from having to look back at a list. And the only way I know to do that is to make you memorize them. It's not just to give you more to work on, but you cannot possibly be efficient without having them memorized. Even a calculator can't do it all for you, so. Work this weekend on that. Just a couple more minutes to work on these. Finishing up, take just one more minute now to finish here. For sake of time, go ahead and put your pencils down. Let's check what you got done. How many were able to finish, though? I saw a few of you. Good, several of you. All right, for the 392, I gave you a tip yesterday. Huge, obnoxious numbers. Don't be like, well, does 4 go in? Does 9 go in? Don't start at the bottom of the list. What I said was try dividing a class by something that's not rational, like, say, uh, 2, and see what you get. What do you get when you divide 392 by 2, class? 98. 98. That can't be right. 196. 196. All right, is that one of my rational roots? It's not one of my rational roots? Yes, it is. What's the square root of 196, class? 14. Ah, so just like that, 14 times the square root of 2. Now, you could, I suppose, instead do well. I could factor to 4 times 98 to get 2 times the square root of 98, and then... Hmm, well, 4 doesn't go in again, either to 16, or 25, or 36, or, ah, oh, 49. And then I do 49 times 2, pull out a 7, and then I still get the 14 squared to 2. But again, big numbers, try dividing by 2. What if 2 doesn't work? What do we try? 3. What if 3 doesn't work? 4. Not 4. That's rational. We want to use irrational numbers for the second factor. Maybe 5, and 6, 7. Not 8, because there's a 4 in that. Certainly not 9 is rational. 10, though you should see the 10 even more easily than that. But let's try those little numbers to see if maybe you'll get a bigger rational factor to begin with. How many ended up with 14 squared to 2, though, regardless of how you did it? Okay, only a few of you on that one. How about this next one? Fourth root of uh, 48. There's not a lot of fourth roots on that list. So we should have seen it pretty quickly, Maddie. Times... The only thing we've got to be careful of is it's not the square root of 16, class. It's the fourth root of 16, which Maddie gives us 
times the fourth root of three. How many of this for the second one? I felt this was much easier than the first one. All right, looking at the next one, all it is is letters, Genesis. And so all we have to do is divide the, by the, in other words, we ask how many times does this go into that? And how many times does six go into 10? Once with how many left over? I'm sorry? Four, Four left <laughs> over. How many times does six go into three? None. So, leave all three. How many of this answer for the third one? This is perhaps the easiest one on there. The next one is a little combination of both. None of it's really that hard, I don't think. But, um, I'm going to take care of the number first. Let's split up that 60. How do we do that, Michael? Uh, I couldn't find a way to split it up. So, I hmm. that to do Well, it's got to be something smaller than 60, right? Yep. Um, so... Like 36 on up is too big. So you've got to try a rational number that's 25 or smaller. Does 25 going evenly? No. 16? No. 9? No. 4? No. Wait. Yes. 60 minute game, 4 quarters, 15 minutes each. Or a 60 minute clock, right? Divided, chopped into fours. So yeah, it's kind of a sneaky one. It wasn't on our four times tables, that's for sure. But the four is in there. So we should have pulled out a... Four. Well, the square root of four, not the four itself, but always the square root or the fourth root or what have you. Yeah, pull out the two, and of course for now we're going to leave inside the 15. 15. As far as the letters go, we need to remember the index is an understood two, and this exponent is an understood one. One. Two goes into four two. with none. none left, and two goes into one none. with one. Obviously the one left, and there's our answer here. How many got this answer? I got that answer. Good several of you. Questions on that? So again, it's just kind of work your way through and be like, and, and maybe you try it, you're like, okay, just 20, I know 25 doesn't work. Right? I know what quarters, you can't get 60 cents just in quarters. Um, 16, I don't think so. Like 3 divided by 16, nope. Uh, 9, I know my 9 times tables, it ain't on there. 4, I don't know, 60 divided by 4, oh, there it is. So again, use the calculator to your benefit. Question, yes ma'am. So whatever um, is left over goes on the inside, because all, all of my homework problems are Ah, uh, yeah, whatever's left over is there. So two goes into four twice, nothing left. Two goes into once, none, one left. You leave what's left, and you pull out whatever, however many times it actually goes in. So on this last one here, uh, let's go to Brandon. Uh, we have the cube root of 54. Again, there's not that many cubes, especially cubes small enough to fit in a number like 54, because they get big pretty quickly. What cube, what rational cube root did you see in 54? 27 times you said two. Two, sorry all right we'll take the cube root of the 27 over there. don't pull the 27 out take out the cube root of the 27 three uh, frankly it could be more accurately we would split in a cube root of 27 cube root of two but i'm just too lazy to draw the cube roots now we all see that but mathematically that would be more accurate so we pull out the three from the cube root of 27 and for now leave the cube root of the two but we got to take care of the letters brandon what do we do with the a Good. Leave the a squared in the radicand because three does not go into two. What about the b? One b on the outside. Anything left over? No. What about the c? Five c's outside. Two c's inside. Two c's inside. What about the d? Three d's. Three d's outside. Nothing on the inside. And there's our answer. How many got this answer for the last one? Those who made it that far. All right. Good questions on this. Questions on this. Next thing you to note: uh, reducing roots of polynomials. Reducing roots of polynomials. Leave just a tiny bit of space, maybe a line or two is all we probably need to leave here. Now I want you to write this down, the cube root of 8x plus 40. The cube root of 8x plus 40. Once you write this statement, put a star next to it. You cannot take roots of terms. You can only take roots of factors. You cannot take roots of terms, plural. Now, a single term you can, a monomial. That's what we've been looking at. You cannot take roots of terms. You can only take roots of factors. Does that sound something familiar about it? Yeah. Always factors, right? Just like in fractions, we couldn't cancel terms. We had a factor first. 
Well, monomials didn't have to factor. Monomials already technically were groups of factors, like that big old ugly 54, A to the whatever, B to the whatever, C to the whatever, right? Those were all multiplied by each other. They were already factors. Here we have separate terms. You can't take the cube root of anything until you first factor. How would I factor an 8x positive 40, Audrey? Take an 8 and Plus five. Good, take out an 8, get x plus 5. Now, class, do you see that we have two factors, an 8 and an x plus 5? And the goal would now be to see if one of those is rational. Maybe I can take the cube root of one of those. Class, the 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. two. Can I take the cube root of x plus 5? No. So I leave the cube root of x plus 5. Notice I don't need the parentheses anymore because there's nothing else in the radical besides x plus 5, though it would not be wrong to leave parentheses. Pretty straightforward. Write this one down. The square root of 3m squared minus 18m plus 27. You look at it and you're like, oh, I can't take the square root of anything except maybe the m squared. No, you can't even take the square root of that. Because we don't take the root of terms, we only take roots of factors. Which means if you see a polynomial radicand class, you're going to have to do what? Factor it. Um, how would I factor this, Abby? Um, take out the 3. Pull out the common factor first to leave us with? m squared negative 6m positive 9. All right. Um, anything else we could do? That's a P S two. It is a perfect square trinomial. And a perfect square trinomial factors into a? Binomial squared. Could I write it as two binomials? Yes, you could backwards foil it. But because we're trying to take a root, you're better off writing it how? Abby? Um, M negative 3 squared. M negative 3 quantity squared. Now we're ready to try to take the root of something. I either got to try to take the square root of a 3 or the square root of an m minus 3 squared. Well, obviously, if this were the square root of 3x squared, we would say class that 2 goes into 2 one time with nothing left, right? We do the same thing here. We can't take the square root of 3. Let me move this out of the way since so it's blocking everyone's view. We can't take the square root of 3, so I'm going to leave the square root of the 3. But 2 goes into 2 one time. So I'm going to pull out the m minus 3 with nothing left over. Questions on these first two problems with polynomial radicands. Does it make sense what we're doing? No change in the process. It just looks more complicated and you feel really smart when you're done. Any questions on this? All right, one more to write down. The square root of 4a cubed minus 12a squared the square root of 4a cubed minus 12a squared. Polynomial, gotta do what first, class? Factor. factor. I guess group, no, factor. All right, what do we factor here, Genesis? A 4a squared? And uh, we pull out, a 4a squared, what does that leave us with? A well, I'm pulling a 4a squared out of a 4a cubed gives me an a. There we go. Pull a 4a squared out of a negative 12a squared gives me a negative 3. And uh, now we're trying to take the roots, right? I've got a 4 right here. Uh, can I take the square root of 4, class? 2. And as far as letters, 2 goes into 2, class, one time with none left. 2 goes into 1, no times. So all a minus 3 is left. Don't technically need the grouping, though, as there's nothing else in there. Does that make sense? And this one down. Um, I decided to do one more. I lied. All right, let's write this one down. Uh, let's take a, um, to make something up off the top of my head here, but I want to look at something. 16x minus 8xy. 16x minus 8xy. Again, polynomial class, we gotta factor it. Uh, Michael, how do I factor this? You take out the 8x. Take out the 8x, and in parentheses I leave. x minus y. Careful. 2x minus y. Yeah. 16x divided by 8x equals? 
Two. Two. And then the 8xy, or negative 8xy divided by the 8x gives us, what is it? There we go. All right, so 8x times 2 negative y. And then we try to take the square root of stuff. Can I take the square root of 8 class? No, but thoughts. It can factor again so that one of the factors is rational class. Four and two. So I can take the square root of the four at least, two, times the square root of the two, two and then two goes into one. Okay, leave the x. Two goes into one. Okay, leave the two negative y. Questions on that one? So that even if it doesn't factor in such a way that you could actually take the root of the factor completely, you could still even sub-factor, if you will, the factor further. Questions on this? Questions on this. All right, next section in your notes. Reducing radicals, part two. Reducing radicals, part two. Because this is one way, this is the most common way that we'll reduce radicals. When a math teacher or mathematician speaks of reducing radicals, this is typically the thing that is first thought of. But reduce simply means to make smaller or perhaps to make simpler. Well, there's another way in which we can make radicals simpler. There is something in our lives that we talked about recently that is not simple. It's annoying and complicated, and I don't like it. That's fractions. And in radicals, as the radicand, you are not permitted to leave fractions in the radicand. If you write that down, no fractions in the radicand. That's considered complicated and hard. By the way, if you're watching on video, this is right after lunch, and chapel went long. Um, so... Guys, you know what that's like. The whole schedule's changed, so the bell's going to ring. We're going to ignore the bell, and then we're going to ignore the next bell. I got 15 more minutes. I'm rolling. Um, second, part two, reducing radicals. No fractions in the radicand. No fractions in the radicand, because they're annoying. Now, here's the question. What part of a fraction makes a fraction a fraction? The denominator, right? If I look at this, is that a fraction class? But if I give it a denominator, now is it a fraction? Yes. So it's really all about the denominator. So here's the key. If the denominator is the whole reason the fraction is a fraction in the first place, if I can take the root of the denominator, I will no longer have a fraction that needs to be in the radical. So write this down. Here's the key. Put a star next to this. Take the root of the denominator. Take the root of the denominator. To keep from having fractions in the radicand, simply take the root of the denominator. Several examples for you to write down. Start with this one. The square root of 1 fourth. We're going to focus on the denominator. I want to take the square root of 4. Class, what's the square root of 4? 2. I actually don't care as much about taking the square root of the numerator. But let's see if we can. Square root of 1? 1. Oh. So the square root of a fourth is a half, meaning if you multiplied a half times itself, squared it, you would get a fourth. Easy enough? Boom. Notice, I do still have a fraction, but at least the fraction's not in the radicand anymore. Does that make sense? Write this one down. The square root of two ninths. Again, I lock in on the denominator. I really don't care that much about the numerator. I care about the denominator. I've got to take the root. What's the square root of nine, class? Three. Three. And uh, the square root of two? No, careful. It's irrational. It's 1.414, blah, blah, blah. It's just the square root of 2. I can leave the square root of 2 because notice, what is my radicand? A 2. That's simple. That's easy. There's still a fraction present, but it's not in the radicand anymore. Take the root of the denominator, and if the numerator don't work out, I don't care. It's a numerator. Y'all ever feel like a numerator? Nobody cares about you. Well, this case, I care about all of you. All of you are denominators to me. You're lowly. Anyway. All right. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, write this one down. The square root of 5 eighths. The square root of 5 eighths. Well, the first one was easy because I can take the square root of 4. second one's easy. I can take the square root of 9. I can't take the square root of 8. I guess we just give up and go home. No. Okay, so you probably remember what to do from years past, but I'm going to go into it anyway. Okay, so uh, the illustration I like to give is this. Okay, um, any of you like putting puzzles together, like family or stuff? How many hate puzzles with a passion? Okay, I don't mind puzzles for the most part, except there's one part of the puzzle I hate, and it is this, that almost every puzzle known to mankind has a large section of blue sky. 
or a large section of green grass, or a large section of trees, or a large section of water, right? And every single blasted piece looks the same, doesn't it? And so you've got like the buildings and the people and the interesting stuff you care about, like that's all put together. And then you got like the sky left. And usually what would happen in my house is, don't put it all back in the box. Okay, you're done. Okay, or there's another secret. You just kind of put the pieces on the table, sort of, and you take a hammer when no one's ready, smash them down, and you make all the pieces fit together. And then you're done with the puzzle, right? Okay, <clears throat> maybe not quite, but that kind of, it's, it's making it work, right? It's like, I don't feel like figuring out all the puzzle. I'm just going to make it work. We're going to make this thing work, okay? We're going to force not with a real hammer, we're going to force the denominator to become something I can take the square root of. So looking at your rational root list, is there a number that 8 can become, not become smaller, it'd have to be a bigger number, but is there something on your rational square root list, maybe you don't even have it written down, it's memorized, that 8 could become? 16. I also heard 64. Either of those works, but I like little numbers, so I'm partial to 16. I can force the 8 to become a 16 if I just multiply it class by 2. But watch here to the bottom. So this becomes 2. That's times raised up. Times 2. It becomes 10 sixteenths, right? I haven't changed anything. I just changed the way it looks, right? 5 eighths, 10 sixteenths, no different. But I changed the way it looks, and now I can take the root of the denominator class four. Can I take the square root of the numerator? But I don't care. Square root of ten. I'm good. I just have to take the root of the denominator. That's all that matters, and it's done. So you make it work. So if I had, for instance, the uh, square root of four sevenths, can I take the square root of seven class? Nope. So I'm going to make it work. I'm going to force that 7 to become a new number that I can take the square root of. What number could 7 become that might help me out? 49. Yeah, maybe a 49. If I made a 49 down here, I can take the square root of that, right? How do I make the 7 a 49 class? Okay. Times 7. What's you to the bottom? You to the top. So my top becomes, my numerator becomes 28. Can I take the square root of 28? No, I don't care. Square root of 28. Can I take the square root of 49? I better be able to, if not, we screwed this thing up. Square root of 49 is seven. 7. Now, I don't care about taking the root of the numerator, but I do like the number to be as small as possible. And I can reduce that 28 using the method we talked about yesterday. What factor in 28 could I take the root of? 4. The 4. So in a sense, maybe it would have helped if I hadn't multiplied 4 times 7, but maybe left 4 times 7. Because I can take the square root of the 4 class to get 2 times the square root of the 7 all over seven. that 7. And that's my final reduced answer. Initial worry, though, is I just got to get that denominator out of there. Take the root. Then we can worry about the numerator, maybe. Oh, two's a little number. We're happy with two. Ten's not too bad. I'm happy with two. 28, there's something in there I could get out of it. Uh, write this one down, the cube root of three halves. And there's a cube root, not a square root, right? So a four doesn't help me. What number do I want the denominator to become? An eight. If I can make the denominator an eight, I can take the cube root. So multiply top and bottom class by? Four. We're just making an equivalent fraction. We've been doing this since third grade. What's my numerator? Twelve. Yeah, of course. Three halves equals twelve eighths. We've known that for a long time. Though our teachers in little classes, you know, they didn't let us do improper fractions. Isn't it great to be in algebra? Free and liberated to use improper fractions whenever you want. Um, but I can take the cube root of eight is the point, class. Two. Can I take the cube root of twelve? Do I care? No. I'm very uncaring. Cube root of twelve. We're done. There's no more cubes in the 12 that could factor for a lot to allow me to take the root. Questions on this? How many remember doing this in years ago? Should remember it from Algebra 1. At your seats, I want you to do several problems. The square root of 7 twelfths, the square root of 1 fifth, the cube root of 1 fourth, and the square root of 3 fourths. I want you to reduce each of those by taking the root of the denominator.
Most people finished up checking your answers. Pretty perfect. Got all four. Four for four. All right. Any questions on these? Yes, ma'am. Lay him that you got them all. Okay. Questions on these? Going once. Going twice. Could you multiply top and bottom by 12 class? Yes. Yeah. It would give you a 144, right? I mean, a. Uh, for, uh, let's see, what is that, 84, 144s? Give you 12 down here, right? That's rational. But what would you have to do with the 84? Factor, right? 4 and uh, 21, and that becomes 2 times the square, 21 all over 12. And then you can cancel this rational 2 with this rational 12 to get rational 1 and 6. We never cancel, by the way, a rational with an irrational. Five and five don't cancel. Two and two don't cancel. But hey, if they're both rational portions, they could cancel. But yeah, the more direct way, get the smallest number possible. Questions at all on these? All right, write this one down there in your notes. The square root of one over x squared. The square root of one over x squared. Practically speaking, what times itself would give you a 1 over x squared? 1 over x, right? Uh, so we know the square root of 1 over x squared is 1 over x. How do we get that? Well, the square root of 1 is 1, right? And the square root of x squared is x. 2 goes into 2 one time, evenly, right? But what if I had um, the square root of 2 over x? 2 goes into 1, it doesn't go into 1, does it? So here, I would want to make my denominator become something that the index 2 could go into evenly. Class 2 can go into 4, okay, or 2, <laughs> which would be even smaller, right? If this were an x squared, just like the last one, 2 goes into 2 one time, and we're good, right? So if only this were an x squared instead of an x, how do I make the x become an x squared? Multiply by x. So my numerator would become 2x. Two x. Two x. Can I take the square root of the 2x? But I don't care. Square two x. Square x squared class. X. Plain old x. And again, don't cancel. This is rational. That's irrational. Don't cancel the two of them together. Now, what if we went with an x to the fourth? Then I multiply top and bottom class not by x, but by x cubed. Right? One x times another x cubed would give me x to the fourth. So I have a two x cubed over two x into four two, two times. But do you see that this 2 could go into that 3 one time with 1 left, and then I could still end up canceling this x with one of those, and I'm back to the answer I had a second ago, right? So the idea would be getting the smallest possible exponent that the index can go into evenly. So write this one down. The cube root of 3 over x squared y to the 7th. The cube root of 3 over x squared y to the 7th. Again, I don't even worry about the numerator. I don't even waste your time looking at it. Focus on the denominator. I wish that this were a number 3 could go into evenly. Well, what can 3 go into evenly, class? Yeah, but even better than that, 3. Right? If this were an x cubed instead of an x squared, 3 goes into 3 evenly. Right? I'm good. How do I turn this x squared into an x cubed? Multiply another x. 
Uh, let's see, three can go into seven, but not evenly. What could I bump the seven up to to get the three to go in evenly? Nine. Nine? Yeah. If this were a nine, then three could go in evenly, right? So how do I turn a y to the seventh into a y to the ninth? Times it by y squared. Two more y's, right? Y squared. And what we do to the bottom? Two to the top. So my numerator becomes? 3x less than. And can I take this cube root of that class? No. But? You don't care. I don't care. Neither should you. Right? This is brainwashing. <laughs> and uh, 3xy squared. And it's training you all to be unfeeling, uncaring people. Make great PE teachers that way one day. And uh, so we take the cube root of the denominator, and what do we get, class? X, Y, cubed. X, Y, cubed. Do you see how to work with letters in the denominator? You just make the denominator a little bit bigger to make it to make the exponent such that the uh, index divides evenly. I think we've got time for one more here. Um, uh, let's go two more. <laughs> I'm going to make it work. <clears throat> the hammer to the schedule. All right, so square root of a over 3m cubed. Here I've got a number and a letter. So i got to make the 3 work first of all. Well, 3 doesn't work, but I can take the square root of... Nine. Okay, so let's make the denominator have a nine in it, and uh, two does not go into three evenly, but two could go evenly into four, right? The next number up, m to the fourth. So if this were a nine m to the fourth class, we could take the square root, right? How do I get go from three m cubed to nine m to the fourth? Multiply by three m. Multiply by three m, top and bottom. So my numerator becomes three a m. Three a m, and that's early. But my baby decides to be up at that time anyway. So my numerator class just stays, well, square root of 3 a.m. Because I don't care. I do care about 3 a.m., but I want to be sleeping. And I take the square root of the 9m to the fourth class, and I get 3m squared. 3m squared. Thank you, Abby. Class, are the rest of you keeping up? Abby's doing great. Are the rest of you following along? Okay, just not as vocal as Abby. You're all sleepy. You feel like it's 3 a.m. I'll write this one down. The fourth root of c over d to the fifth, x to the tenth. This is our last one. Fourth root of c over d to the fifth, x to the tenth. Can four go into five evenly, class? No. What's a little bigger than five that four can go into evenly? Eight. eight. So let's shoot for the fourth root of d to the eighth. Could four go into ten evenly? No. No. So bump it up maybe to an x to the twelfth. What do I multiply top and bottom by, class? D cubed x squared. Somebody very loud upstairs. You could come up there and give some detention or something. All right, so uh, my numerator should be class. C D cubed x squared. C D cubed x squared. And uh, we're going to go this way with the answer. Um, my numerator just stays. Fourth power C. Not fourth power. Oh. Fourth square root. Root. Just root. Fourth root. That's a root symbol. Fourth root of. C D cubed x squared. Yeah, at least you were answering. All over class. Okay, thank you, Michael, for joining in there. And I thought I heard a little bit of a rumble, half-hearted, though. All right, and there we go. Do we understand how to... I'm going to kill that kid. <laughs> Questions on this? In Christian love, of course. Bless their soul into heaven. A little early. All right, questions on this? All right, homework for this evening is to do a handout. Gavin Brecken, uh, the handout is in the description of the video. Uh, but we're only going to do the even number problems on the handout. Only the even number problems on the handout, which is good because there's 36 things on here. You don't want to do all 36. You only want to do 18. You only want to do the even number problems on the handout. So do the handout evens. I knew I had enough. Okay. <laughs> I give Genesis to. You can have one, Abby. Don't forget, Lesson 29 on Tuesday, quiz over memorized rational roots. Make sure you memorize them. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and go Crusaders.